Hey everyone, my name's Drew, and we are here. This is going to book number four of the UPPA up against Just Lucas and his Hellblaze Volcarona. Now, this is going to be a really, really difficult matchup, right? Because I didn't realize just how difficult a Zamazenta would be to build against. But we are here, and we are up against said Zamazenta. And there are a lot of aspects to his team that are difficult for me, right? But between Razor, Sven, and myself, we kind of built a Sand Slash set that was really made to take on a ton of his team. However, in that time, Lucas made transactions, which made it really, really difficult, namely because it relied on weather, and he picked up a Pelipper, which was really difficult for me. However, 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 we decided as a group that uh, Pelipper didn't really make sense to bring here. And honestly, Pelipper not coming, if it doesn't come, we can really just kind of do whatever we want here, essentially, right? Because again, I had a lot to deal with the Pelipper potentially, and it really was the only thing stopping my Sand Slash from going in the way that I really wanted it to. So... We decided we're just going to go with it. And if you guys can kind of see what's going on here, 100% of the time, my dedicated lead was going to be the Mill Tank. It was going to get up Sandstorm. It was going to get up Rocks and then Sandstorm. And then maybe if it baits in the Zamazenta, this thing is intended to take a close combat, an adamant close combat, and it can Thunder Wave back. So that was another part of it. But other than that, it just gets damage off with Seismic Toss. It goes down as hopefully as quickly as possible and it gives my sand slash a handful of turns in sand to be able to get a sword stance up and uh essentially bop the team right and now depending on what his team looks like it's not really intended to six so the team however 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 the kind of contingency plan here is after it goes down have galvantula set up webs and then Pinsir can go in. Pinsir can pretty much outspeed the entire team under webs. Storm throw negates the boost from Zamazenta, as well as the drop from Incineroar, as well as any curses from Snorlax. So I'm in a decent position to kind of win with Pinsir potentially. And if Pinsir goes down, then my last contingency plan is going to be the Kieran Black to ideally clean things up. But honestly, I don't think there's any reason that this shouldn't still do what it's intended to do. Obviously, the Pelipper is going to be really difficult for me. However, I do think I have the tools that I need. And honestly, if I can just Sword Dance up in front of something, then I can just KO the Pelipper with a, with a Stone Edge. But I'm going to get right into the game. So we're going to get right into it. And like I said, my dedicated lead is going to be the Mill Tank. I think it really kind of handles whatever he wants to lead off with and at least gets damage off it. It can potentially Thunder Wave, which would be huge. But the main idea is to just get up hazards. And, and again, you guys should know it if you've seen me at all, that I do not like turn one hazards. However, this is the type of team where it makes the most sense and where I do think it uh, is going to thrive, right? This is the kind of the most structured game plan I've ever had going into a games and rocks are going to be reasonably important for that, right? So goes for a low kick on turn one, leads off with, with the Incineroar, uh, and it's also really fun bringing a mill tank and not having to care about Intimidate drops because usually it's either Body Fresh or Seismic Toss, so that's been fun. But regardless, uh, locate doesn't doesn't do a ton. It should reveal that I'm pretty much max uh, defense here, because again, it still does allow me to take an adamant uh, close combat and thunder wave a Zamazenta back. I think even with that damage, I'm, it's still a bit of a roll. But I do think I'm still able to uh, party pods, which again doesn't particularly matter for our purposes here. But what it does allow me to do is just get a sandstorm up. Now, here it goes into it goes into something, but. I, looking back on this, I probably should have thought, given it some thought to kind of, um, to kind of whether or not I should heart switch out or do any kind of craziness there. However, go straight into Dracovish, and he was messing around. We, we actually played this in call with a couple of other people, but, but he was kind of telling me that, that it might be, uh, that it might be Sand Rush Dracovish, but it just took sand damage, so it's confirmed not Sand Rush Dracovish. However... I kind of want him to KO me, right? I don't mind getting KO'd. And if anything, I might take a, a Fisher's Friend. I, I haven't run any calcs to be fair. I have no idea if that's true or not. But uh, I might even take one and then be able to Thunder Wave it back, right? Like, I personally don't care about this mill tank going down. I want this mill tank to go down right now so that Sand Slash gets as many turns as possible. But he thought that by going into Dracovich, he was baiting in my Seismic Toad. And he wanted to have Mute in here to do what Mew's gonna do. And you guys are gonna see what Mew's gonna do. But he was trying to bait in my, my Seismic Toad by bringing in the Dracovish. But again, I want the Dracovish to KO me. I want I want either the, the, the Dracovish to, to hit me and I take the hit and I Thunder Wave it back or uh, or just to go down and let Sand Slash come in and do what Sand Slash does, right? 
but uh, I get the Thunder Wave off on the Mew, which means I Thunder Wave myself, essentially. Goes for the block, so I can't switch out, which again is fine. Um, I check Sandstorm turns, right, because A, I'm bad at counting those, and uh, B, I'm starting to think now that, oh, maybe Sandslash is not going to get its time to do what it needs to do. But I'm I'm literally stuck here. What can I do other than click Seismic Talks, right? Uh, I'm going to get some Sandstorm Chip. <coughs> and I'm going to kind of do whatever I can in front of this Mew, right? And honestly, Mew was a huge issue for my team. So if he wants to give it to me in this way, then I will take it. But this is still really awkward vis-a-vis -vis kind of the overall kind of strategy that I had for this game and I'm in an awkward position it's not a bad position but it's just an awkward one right and I'm kind of outside of what I think I want to do here right I don't really know what to do I, I, I and and I honestly can't even do much right I'm kind of stuck here just um just seismic tossing and now that he got off the full transform in prison block thing going on here now I'm forced to struggle which is fine. He gets a turn to, to, to get up his rocks, but actually, was that a speed tie? If I had if I had been able to struggle first, yeah, that would be a speed tie, right? So, oh no, never mind. He he always takes this this struggle. I believe it's the next struggle where I pick up a KO. But yeah, if um if uh I think it was ideally a speed tie. So maybe if struggle did more or some seismic tosses left him lower then I probably could have could have prevented rocks but either way or or honestly one more pair right if he got gotten that pair out of the turn before and I'd want it to be tied then uh, it would have been something interesting however 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 we're not in that position anymore we got up the rocks which is pretty unfortunate but we can manage we can manage so I don't know what's going to come in here however I do think the best way to win this is going to be by setting up webs as soon as I can that way the sand slash still has somewhat of a chance because sand slash I believe is fast enough to to take on his slower threats and I don't think he's gonna go in with some crazy setup and now that it's a double down I think I think we're gonna have some turns here to, to play with and I do get in fact get a chance to click seek webs right away it goes another snorlax and I'm not really too too afraid that the snorlax can oko maybe it has a uh, heat crash which is potentially worst case scenario but uh i think as long as i get up webs and i keep them up i'm in a really strong position vis-a-vis -vis the sand slash and the pincer potentially winning this game together right because uh, a lot of his team is super super slow and webs are not i think uh i'm in a really solid position to do a lot of damage to, to the team even with just um one round of webs and and non-sanded uh, sand slash, right? So I don't think I'm in the worst shape. I don't think I'm in the worst shape. I'm just uh, not in the best shape. So I don't think there's any other thing really to do but to get damage off on this Snorlax, especially because it, it would help to ensure some KOs, right? I don't think uh, I have a ton that can just Oko a, a Snorlax uh, from full. So I think my time is best served just getting some true damage off and and enabling some other mods in the back to really get the KOs where, where it matters here, right? I believe here is where I go into Sand Slash again, just as a kind of breaker, especially it, especially against his slower mons. This is going to be this is going to probably be able to get up a sword dance on this turn and then be able to break most of whatever wants to come in or just break what's in front of me and getting the Snorlax out of the way is going to be, again, ideal for things like the Pinsir and uh, other things that I have in the back here, right? It goes out into the Pelipper, which is a very free Swords Dance. And I can kind of, and I kind of have free reign because as far as I'm concerned, this is his only Defogger, right? Um, Especially because it wasn't on on mute either, so that was pretty. And and Mew had already gone down, so I'm feel pretty safe here. But I miss the Stone Edge, which means he gets the defog for free. Now he was really confident in the moment that he could take any possible Stone Edge from me, even at plus two. Um, 
which I didn't quite understand. Uh, maybe he, if he was fully max defense bold, or yeah, I think it's bold, then it's a roll to KO, to be fair, but it might have been like either 50 50 or a roll of my favorite. I don't quite remember, but regardless, I didn't re I, di I didn't quite know why he was so confident that he'd be able to take it. And he, you could see now he was nowhere near like max defense bold. Uh, this was always a KO, like 1000% of the time, right? Which, uh, again, it kind of upset me in the moment. I think I hit, literally like hit hit my hit my armrest in frustration, and uh, it was not a moment that I handled particularly well because because uh, that was going to be my, my moment to prevent rock or to keep webs up. And if I had done that, I really do think it becomes a very difficult position for me to lose from. Because um, Pinsir does so, so much damage to, to, to the team. My team overall just can do so, so much here. But uh, the Dracovish comes in. And I don't think I'm in a position to really mess with this at all. And Sandslash, again, can deal with a lot of his slower threats. Because Sandslash can deal with things like the Snorlax, which I don't otherwise deal with particularly well. I can also deal with the Incineroar. Uh, I preserve it, and he feels like he can go for a fishing run this time, which, uh, which is funny because I, I know that I surprised him quite a bit by, by uh, not going for it the last time. So this caught him off guard that I actually did make the Titan Toad switch. So I'm keeping him on his toes a little bit here, but uh, there's no more rain for for the rest of the game. I do zero damage on Earth Power. However, this thing does have low kick on it, specifically for this thing. And um, I honestly don't know what kind of damage I'm, I'm doing, but it doesn't on honestly do a whole ton. But it does look like high enough to hit range. Um, pro probably just outside of two hit range. But uh, he starts to body slam me, and I start to second guess myself because I really don't want to get paralyzed on this thing when this thing is meant to stand up to a ton of the team, right? It has to stay healthy for the for the Dracovish as well as the Zamazenta potentially. Um, so I really would prefer this to not get uh, paralyzed, right? So I'm really in an awkward position here. But again, it just looks so close to being a solid two hit that I kind of go for it anyway. Does withdraw, which is merciful because i really don't want to play with those 30 percent chances right and goes out into the incinerator now i can get a low kick off i can do okay damage but i'm starting to think again here i really don't want to get knocked off i really don't want to get will-o-wisped I'm, I'm really not in a position to really uh mess around with those types of things i believe i switch out here unless i just go for an earth power I'm, I'm thinking about it now i'm thinking about whether or not uh to risk getting wisped or whatever the case but the bigger thing is this thing is is again meant to stand up to a lot it's it's important for the look of this match right so i honestly w oh right, right right so so i really don't want to get wisped on my sand slash either right so i'm thinking that, that that the best kind of um the best kind of like middle ground here is for me to go into kiram and kiram is just meant to, to eat up a knockoff Potentially eat, eat up a wisp. This is a modest max special attack, Kiram. And this is this next sequence is gonna really show how important those webs work to the overall look of this game. Because I can I can take a knock I can come in and on a knock off fine, right? And if webs are still up, I think I'd be very, very free to just click Earth Power. But because the Zamazenta is still looming in the back, I feel kind of obligated to click dragon dance first and he actually misclicks i believe on this turn and goes for another knockoff which was unfortunate right it's very un unfortunate obviously um but you can see that uh well okay but you guys can see that i feel like i have to manage my my kiram speed which would not have been necessary under webs right i could have just earth powered and i would have been confident that if the zamazenta wants to come in then i can earth power that too and really kiram is no longer meant here to to kind of be the 
the late game sweep parts really meant it's it really has to spread damage onto the team because of kind of the mess that the earlier turns were and and you and you can see that if i was able to get two earth powers off it probably would have ko'd but was in a position to do that because i had to manage speed because webs beating a dead horse but you had to get it right anyway now i'm thinking i can go back into this thing because i know i'll be faster and i can just click earth power ko from from this position and be relatively fine right i maybe should have considered going into sand slash but uh, Sand Slash puts me in an awkward position as well. This honestly also made me think that I can get a little bit healthier with, with leftovers, so this felt a little bit better to me. And uh, I could just pick up a KO and see whatever he wants to go into. Realistically, what he's going to want to go into is the big boy. And I believe that's what he does, if I remember correctly. And honestly, it's going to put me in a really not great position and i want you to I, I really want you to think about what this what the rest of this game would have looked like with, with with webs right now obviously i'm really not in a position to do much but uh i can i i, I think i'm considering it because uh my seismitoad really does take hits really darn well right and I think I'm just thinking to myself what I should sack here because I really need to sack something in order to let my sand slash in because my sand slash can take a hit and it can do a ton of damage to this thing. And really my 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 goal here is 50% onto this Zamazenta because so much of my team does 50% to, to the Zamazenta that that uh, I really just need... I'm, I'm trying to orchestrate an, an end game where Seismitoad can win the end game, right? Seismitoad can potentially stand up to, to the Dracovish, and it can potentially stand up to, to the Zamazenta. Obviously, I believe Snorlax is still up at this point. I did I have to deal with that, but um, but not all hope is lost. Even though in the moment I kind of felt like all hope was lost, I was really on tilt in in the moment. In all fairness, I was really upset in the moment because uh, again. This interaction, if webs were up, I just storm throw, and I do a ton here, right? I do a ton here. But, uh, I never get that opportunity, right? I get Behemoth bashed, and, uh, I just don't get any damage onto the Zamazent, right? It's insane how this game would have gone with webs up, right? I'm gonna try not to mention that every four seconds, but, like I said... All that was just a sack to allow in my my sand slash, and I don't even want to mess around with it. I kind of I, I kind of thought I, I could be like cute and cheeky and uh, click swords dance here, but it really was never going to be worth it. And I just click earthquake, no swords dance here. Just trying to hit whatever wants to come in. I believe he sacks off. Yeah, he sacks off the the thing here, and uh, that's gonna be fine. I believe now he goes into the Dracovish, and now the Dracovish has has to think about the Seismitoad in the back, right? Because I've done a really good job at keeping the Seismitoad in the back healthy, right? I can potentially go out into it right now. Or potentially something just goes straight up down if I don't uh, call this correctly, right? If he does go through with the, with the water move, then I just go down. However, he goes for the outrage. I'm pretty confident that I can take one and I can click EQ and uh, I do a ton of damage. Now, I want to talk about this turn in a second hold up wait a minute all right i want to call a time out here and just talk about this turn specifically for a little bit longer because there were some things that i didn't realize about this interaction until much after the game and again i was a bit on tilt but there were some things that i wish i thought about in the moment right so this dracovish was forced into clicking outrage here and truthfully if i had it in my head in this moment what i could have done was click leech life on this turn because if you notice his outrage took me from 152 to 67 hp which was 85 points of damage 
Now, if I had clicked Leech Life, I would have done roughly 25 to 30 percent to the Dracovish, which, if you see from the earthquake damage, would have been more than enough to KO. I believe he told me later that Dracovish took that EQ on 36 HP. And by looking at the calcs, Leech Life does a minimum of 42 HP. So given similar rolls, I probably would have KO'd there and I probably would have been fine. But also according to the calc, I recover 13 to 15% of my HP. So if you do that math, that actually translates from somewhere between 21 and 25 points of HP back, which completely changes the calcs for the second outrage. Worst case scenario, I get 21 points back and it becomes a 50% roll to KO, or I get the max 25% and it becomes a 25% chance to KO. So assuming that I get HP back through leech life and it's enough to take a second outrage then i get to eq ko the dracovish and now zamazenta is forced to ko the sand slash which puts me in a position where zamazenta and seismitoad 1v1 each other from full now i think i talk about that a little bit later but i should always be able to win that 1v1 because he either has to close combat lowers defenses and i always take two close combats from where i was and i will be able to to hit with earth power or if he wants to play around that he can howl twice let me get back up to full with leftovers even after those two howls i take a plus two close combat almost all the time and at that point i have the opportunity to get three earth powers off and i can potentially win that 1v1 from there i'm probably gonna end up repeating myself after this but if i had been able to see that full picture i think late life would have actually been my path to victory but i do think i was a little bit on tilt who knows if i would have seen that regardless but i really wanted to mention this potential end game going on to the to the rest of this game right and now i can just let this thing go down now that i gotten enough damage off on it uh i can now i believe just go into seismic toad. actually i think seismic toad is my last mod right so i have to go into seismic toad but i can just go into seismic toad i can uh take an outrage i can fail this thing and it's just down to zamazenta and seismic toad eventually <laughs> i don't know why it takes me so long to click the power but i think i'm just trying to see how much damage oh also if it hit itself that would have been potentially game breaking as well that would have been potentially game breaking as well but again i was also just so on tilt i didn't even think about like uh how potentially game breaking this could have been it was just i i never really recovered mentally from from that uh from that stone edge miss it was always just in the back of my head just kind of putting me on tilt just kind of making me upset and and uh and it was never really something I, I got over over the entirety of this match right but this thing finally comes in and i took half damage and this thing didn't take half damage right you have to imagine a, a bunch of scenarios where we have to up and i get half damage onto this zamazenta right because if half damage is on the zamazenta i can pretty much just click earth power and win i can take a hit click earth power win right let's go combat um i just clicked scald because again the game was over at this point right there was zero percent chance of, of, of winning this game uh i don't even think a crit earth power would have done it with the special defense drop right it just was not a thing that could have happened right so um i i just clicked scald to see if i could get a cheeky burn i did get a cheeky burn but uh it never mattered right but again you look at that damage and you look at how much damage Earth Tower would have done. And really, it comes down to whether whether or not I get half damage onto this Zamazenta or whether I don't. Because that was my entire game plan. Just, just whatever happens, I want to put him in a position where he feels pressured and gives me some damage onto the Zamazenta. Or, alternatively, I'm in a position where I never have to take damage onto my Seismitoad. And then I can win that way because my Seismitoad can stand up to two close combats. And then as long as I can earth power twice, I KO. The only way around it, if he sees that coming, he has to click Howl twice. And then I take close combat from full. In which case, I can just earth power three times and, and still KO. So I always win that Seismitoad Zamazenta 1v1. I win that every time as long as I play that correctly, right? I was in a position to get to do more things there I, I would have built a different team if it if i did not rely on webs but i really wanted webs to stay up there and it couldn't because of the stone edge i really do think it was a really difficult position to lose from if i kept webs up but i'm not going to belabor the point any longer i think the dead horse has been beaten quite enough i'm going to leave it there because so much watching it was still a really really fun game we will be back really really soon with more weeks of the upba as well as other things to come in the really really near future but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll be once again out